بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله الذي حلل النكاح وحرم الزنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله we will start our lecture uh, as you all know alhamdulillah we were discussing the topics related uh, to marriage for our youth and we cover many aspects uh, the, our last lecture was regarding what are the qualities uh, for one a sister to look for a man or uh, qualities of a man to look for a sister and tonight our lecture will be related to the khitbah or the courting or to approach the family regarding uh, marriage inshallah we will be discussing only tonight how to approach the family and how to request the girl's hand what's called engagement uh, and we will be covering many other subjects uh, the haram courting and the halal courting we're not going to discuss anything related to the wali. Uh, we will be postponing that lecture for our next um, uh, Saturday, inshallah ta'ala. Being traveling right now in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, uh, tonight I will short the lecture as a traveler and I have a guest with me, so I will just talk summary of that tonight. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. For a sister or a brother, when you find the attributes of marriage that you're looking for, when you find the right person, the best way to do is to go and propose for the family. What's called courting, to go and talk to the family or another language, uh, you're encouraged what's, to do what's called engagement. Not engagement ring, but what's called engagement. So there's many ways to approach the family. In the hadith, Prophet Sallallahu a companion came to him who wants to marry and Prophet Sallallahu said, Idhab faqad ankahtuha bima ma'aka min al-Qur'an Go, I make you married whatever you memorize from the Qur'an In the case of Aisha, she was virgin Rasulullah proposed to her father Arwa bin Zubair narrated the beautiful hadith where when Rasulullah came to Abu Bakr and asked Aisha's hand Abu Bakr told, so if the messenger of Allah is doing the right way, where are we? He came to Abu Bakr and he said when Rasulullah Sallallahu asked her hand, Abu Bakr replied, But indeed, uh, you are my brother in regarding to Allah, his deen. Yani, you are my brother for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. For Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi responded, and he said, Anta akhi fi deen Allah. Indeed, yes, I'm your brother when it comes to the deen of Allah and his book. Wahiya li halal, and she is halal for me. And that teaches Islam the uh, nothing wrong with to marry uh, even if she is a virgin on the other hand um salama rasulullah approached her uh, when she finished her idda since you all know abu bakr went to her and proposed for, to her she refused him and um, somehow rasulullah uh, when he approached her and uh, he talked to her she accepted him and the sunnah is when you approach the family, Umar used to do this. Umar radiallahu anhu arda, he used to do alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala muhammad. Uh, he used to praise Allah azza wa jal. And then he used to say, so and so like to marry your daughter so and so. If you accept this marriage and you facilitate, checked, he used to say, subhanallah. Burayda bin al-Hasib reported that a group of Ansar, and this talks about how uh, Ansar uh, used to encourage others to marry. In Medina, there was more marriage than Mecca. So a group of companions came to Ali, encouraging him to marry Fatima. You all know uh, the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they say, why don't you consider marrying Fatima? What's wrong with that? And Ali was a shy man, radiallahu anhu arda. So uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Wasallam, he doesn't want to, uh, Ali doesn't want to approach Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's a little bit shy. So when he came to Rasulullah Prophet asked him, what do you want? I mean, what do you came for? And he was so shy, he said, I came to marry your daughter. Even though that's his cousin, but he was so shy. So Rasulullah told him, Marhaban wa ahad. Welcome a family member. When he went back to the group and he told him what Rasulullah answered to him, they told him, uh, it's two things, it's either one of the two. When he said marhaban wa ahlan, either he accept you 
that means welcome or he means you are my family and indeed it was the other way around so why did I took all these examples every single woman that you want to marry you should approach her family that is the best way to do and ask her hand one of the bid'ah thing that people do they go and they recite Surah Al-Fatiha you know uh, either they do let's recite Fatiha or they do before Fatiha and that's not only Somalis uh, all the Arab culture or the uh, other cultures they all do that they all say let's read uh, Fatiha and that has no place in Islam there is many other haram uh, uh, things that people do but I will go to it the, the, the subject that I would like to cover prior is how to propose the halal way of proposing to the family but before you pro pro go to the family and introduce yourself you must know who you're marrying you must know how she looks like you must know you must like the girl it's not just go ahead and and ask first thing to do is not just go to the family the first thing to do is you need to know who you're dealing with Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet ﷺ, when a man came to him and told him that he just got married one man said oh Prophet of Allah I marry a woman so Rasulullah ﷺ asked him anadarta ilayha did you look at her have you looked at her do you know how she looks like he said no he said unzur ilayha fa inna fi a'yun al-ansari shay'un go ahead and look at her you, you should go and look at her because there is something uh, the eyes of Ansar in other words the Ansar eyes are small uh, what would we benefit out of this hadith you need to marry and look at the person before you marry you need to look at the person and know exactly who you're getting married instead of later complaining she's too short or he's too tall or whatever the excuses are you must know each other and look each other Mughira al Shu'ba and Asr ibn Malik narrated that when Mughira wants to marry one of the women, Rasulullah told him, Idhab, fandur ilayha, fa innahu ahra an yudama baynakuma. Which means, go look at her. It will then be possible, it will be more possible to have harmony between two of you. If you don't look at the person and know how she looks like, and like how she looks like, or like how he looks like, then how do you gonna have a harmony and love? Many times nowadays, people marry each other, uh, overseas you know somebody tell you that there's a good girl mashallah she's religious or a brother who's religious and later when they marry each other they may dislike some of the physical appearances so if you don't look each other and know and know when you're getting married that you're tall or you're short or you're fat or you're skin whatever the, the case is so Mughira goes to the lady to her family and he wants to see her so he approached the family and says, I would like to see your daughter. The Prophet of Allah told me to go and look. So the family were speechless. The young woman came out of the room and she said, I reject that. The only way I will accept that is if the Prophet of Allah told you to do that, then you can look at me. If he did not tell you to do that, then you're not allowed to look at me. So he looked at her and he married her. He used to say, no other woman attain her status of love with me even though I have married more than 70 girls and he, he says this is the best woman I ever had I married 70 women and just because I checked her out before I married by doing the right way and looking at her I uh, and I liked her then she became the most pleasing one to me another hadith that narrated by Muhammad bin Maslama reported by him Rasulullah said, إِذَا أُلْقِيَ فِي قَلْبِ إِمْرِئٍ خِطْبَةَ إِمْرَأَةٍ فَلَا بَأْسَ أَنْ يُنْظُرْ إِلَيْهَا So that's before. This hadith talks about when it comes to the person's heart. If you like somebody, before you go and ask her hand, there is nothing wrong. It's permissible for him to look at her. So Rasulullah said, if you like somebody, before you go and approach the family to marry them, to marry that person, go look at her. Another narration that narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah says similar statement. That one was before the, before the khitbah, before the courting. إِذَا خَطَرَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَرْأَةِ فَإِنِ اسْتَطَاعَ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ مِنْهَا إِلَى مَا يَدْعُوهُ إِلَى نِكَاحِهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ This is more amazing hadith. If one of you want to go and court women, in other words, if you want to go and approach family, before you uh, approach the family, if you, if he could see of her as much as would convince him to marry, so as much as that convince you to marry, so meet with her one time,
two times, three times. Meet with her in the halal way, which will come to it. So as much as, look at her as much as that will lead you or you will be convinced by it. Rasul says he should do that. He should go and marry the person. Another hadith, Jalil ibn Abdullah says, by talking about this hadith, he explains further, he says, Afterwards, I wanted to marry a woman, so I used to hide to observe her. He used to hide to look at her until I had seen that which led me to marry her. So one of the things I used to do, I used to hide to look any woman that I want to marry. Not, not just go and hide behind the walls and look at her. In other words, you talk to the sister. If you like her, we will come to it. One of the things you could do, you can look at her without her knowing. If you see her walking in the street, uh, you can look at her how she walks. Or you can look at him how he eats. Or you can look at him how they behave. Or you can look at her behind the fence how she does. Or you can send somebody and say, tell me how she is. But the conditions are as such that I will come to it. The attention must be marriage purposes. And the mahram must know about it. So you must talk to the family. And from there, before you ask, there is a one like ask the family, can I talk to her? Before you propose the family, ask permission yourself and see and do investigations basically. Abu Umayma also narrates another hadith. إِذَا خَطَبَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَرَأَ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهَا إِذَا كَانَ إِنَّمَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهَا لِخِطْبَتِهَا وَإِنْ كَانَتْ لَا تَعْلَمْ So this hadith talks about when one of you want to marry a woman before he court her, it is permissible for him to look at her if he only looks because he seeks her marriage. So the only way you can hide yourself is if you're seeking really marriage. Even if she doesn't know. Prophet ﷺ says, even if she does not know that he is watching her, it is allowed. That is actually authentic hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad. And all the hadith, by the way, that I am sharing with you are all authentic. If anyone has any questions, he can ask. So let me cover a couple of things. The difference between casual look and look for marriage, there is a big difference. It is haram for you to stare women. But if you want to marry a woman, you are allowed to stare at her based on all the hadith. So you're allowed to look at her one time, two times, three times, if the purpose is marriage. If the purpose is not marriage, then it is haram. Another thing that's haram is you cannot look the woman for a purpose of desire or lust. It must be sincere about marriage. Third requirement, when you want to marry a woman, she must be available. You cannot look a woman that's talking to another guy. Or you cannot look a guy who's talking to another girl. It has to be, if you going to propose to the family, will she be available? If she's not family, you're not allowed to look at her. Another thing that we're learning from the hadith, you cannot look at her in khalwa. You know, it cannot be privately alone in one place. It could be public places. And we will come to it later. Exchanging photos. Nowadays, there are so many problems with the internet and, you know, chatting rooms and Facebooks and what have you. So we're talk we need to cover some of that. It is prohibited if it's all about lust and desire. If it is marriage, it is allowed to meet someone and you can only send to a picture that's related to the requirement of Islam with the permission of her wali. Is it allowed for a woman to look at the guy same way for the guy? Yes. Women's are, sisters are allowed to look for the brothers as much as they are allowed for the brothers to look at the sisters. How can you take correspondence? Uh, they can communicate, uh, you know, public places where they can meet in Starbucks or market public places. It's allowed as long as the family are aware of it. Khulwa is being lonely in one place. For instance, Prophet Sallallahu prohibited and he told any man or woman that's alone in one place, shaitan is a third among them. So you try to avoid that because shaitan puts a lot of um, ill feelings uh, which is haram between the two people. So internet has a lot of problems. Everybody paints himself perfect picture, you know. Uh, everybody talks over the phone and online. People usually lie. People may send you a picture that's not them or their brother or their cousin. So you must verify who you're going to marry. So best way to do is meet with the people with a person who you want to marry. A lot of times people are good at it, picturing themselves and bringing themselves as being the best of the best. Rasulullah said and he prohibited a person who pretends having that which he does not. 
person who acts like someone else who wears it's like someone who wears two garments of deception so that is really haram uh, people waste their time writing emails and phone conversations and uh, what they call uh, you know long uh, talk that's haram in Islam as I mentioned the other hadith previously if any two people like each other best thing that they can do Rasulullah said I have never seen anything better for two people who like each other except ziwaj so best thing to do is if you like somebody go and marry sending digital pictures it's it's very you need to be very careful nowadays people change your picture else's picture so if you don't trust the person don't send any pictures to them don't send pictures that you don't have any hijab unless yani, some scholars are allowing based on all the hadith that I mentioned that if it is really marriage and the family is aware of it yes he can see you some of your hair or he can see uh, some of your hands but I'm not into that right now all what I'm telling you is if you have to send a picture make sure you send a picture with uh, that you are on hijab and try your best to know if he is sincere. A lot of people are not sincere. You know, many cases, internet communication takes place and you have seen how people lie, how they communicate a uh, married woman or how they communicate already, somebody who's already married acting like she's single or how they communicate young kid when he's adult. Uh, in America, there is a big problem. Uh, it is really uh, very much a uh, problem nowadays that, uh, you know, women, for instance, I have seen as an as, um, example, as a family counselor, I have seen women who are married, okay, where their husbands are away uh, for a long time and they start communicating with someone else while they are married and or he is somewhere else traveling or he is driving car somewhere in the world or whatever the case is. Because people are not doing what's right and they end up having these issues. Uh, I even had one of the funniest cases that, you know, allowing someone who's not muhram in your house. Uh, one of the brothers brought someone to his house and he wants the person to teach him some computer programs. And every time he comes home, he's a, he considers a little kid. His argument is, he's only 22 years old and I, my wife are 40s, who cares, you know? And that, that 22 years old end up taking his wife because every time they watch TV together and they, there is nothing, uh, they, he allow them khalwa and what have you till, you know, nobody tells him how's your day and next thing he knows he sleeps while they're watching TV and next thing you know his wife wear hijab and uh, she start telling him we cannot have relationship because I'm in a repentance zone. What is this repentance zone, zone you're in, you know? Uh, the Prophet told if anyone who is in repentance zone he has to stay from his husband and and, and his wife you know the hadith that, uh, talks about uh, the, the ayah that Allah Azza wa says you know the this he, he took that ayah and he wants to apply it to this house basically it was a khabith that wants to take somebody else's wife and we end up finding the prophet she's talking about is the prophet that who's fixing the computers who's home so be careful by um, by who you talk to online, you don't know who you're dealing with. Courting a married woman or a woman in idda, it is haram. Rasulullah said, "He's not one of us who turns a woman against her husband or a slave against his master." يعني, he's not among us anyone who turns uh, you know a woman against her husband, and a lot of people really do that. Uh, family members or whatever uh, you can call so it's it is haram to do that another thing that is haram is to talk to someone who is talking to somebody else so if you know this girl is talking to a brother and they're talking about marriage it's haram for you to interfere them a lot of girls usually what they do is they talk to two or three or four guys so they can pick up one it is haram in Islam Rasulullah the long hadith of Hurairah one of the things he mentioned at, at the end, he says, and let one of you uh, not take over uh, his or his khitbah uh, till he marries her or he leaves her. Another hadith, Qubba bin Amr, Rasulullah says, وَلَا أَخْتَرُ عَلَىٰ خِبَةَ أَخِيهِ حَتَّى يَذَى And he cannot do that till he either leaves or uh, abandons her. And many other narration about Hurairah, he says, حَتَّى يَنْكِحَ أَوْ يَتْرُقْ Till he marries 
or he leaves. So you need to make sure who you're communicating with. Is she with somebody else? Before you even go to the family, a lot of times people are communicating someone who's already uh, talking to someone else. Another hadith, You know, as Somalians, we're good at it. Uh, somebody opens his business here, we open a business next to him. Somebody want to talk to this girl, everybody want to talk to that girl. Somebody's talking to this brother, everybody want to talk to that brother. So you need to make sure who you're uh, communicating. And how many times it happens? It happens often. Other prohibited forms of courting in Islam, it is haram for a man who has four wives to look for another wife till he divorces one of them. Yani, if you want to look another woman and you want to court another woman, you need to divorce. There is no such thing in Islam called that um, if, the, if the man has four wives and he goes, a lot of times you all heard that. If a man has four wives and then Islam allows you that and then he goes out of his way and he wants to, Allahumma sta'an, uh, find another wife and he wants to marry that fifth wife, the first one gets divorced. There is no such thing in Islam. Uh, you either want you either going to divorce one of them if there is no act can take place there is no marriage takes place before you divorce one of them another thing that's haram is communicating while you're married in any form and shape talking to your wife's aunt or your wife's sister uh, another thing that's haram is if a woman gets divorced three times uh, till she gets another um, she, till she marries on her own and gets divorced that man cannot marry her. A lot of times we do what's called mahlal. You know, they find a man and they say, let's marry each other and get divorced so I can go back to the old one. Another courting that's haram, form of marriage that's haram is talking to a woman who is in idda. A lot of times, you know, this wife, she gets divorced and within the three months, she is dating with many other guys. It is haram. Or her husband died. And while, you know, her husband, when he died within the four months, She's communicating. All of this haram. Even Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Wala junaha alikum fi ma arrattum bihi min khutbatin nisai, aw aknantum fi anfusikum alim Allahu annakum sadat kuruna, nahuna wala kila tuwa iduhuna sirran illa an taqulu qawla ma'rufa." So you cannot go straight and tell her that you want to marry her. You can basically go over, but there is no azima or that the nikah can take place. There is no undertake marriage contract till the degree period gets finished. Uh, Abdullah ibn Umar reported in hadith uh, when his sister husband died, has, uh, Hafsa's husband died, that um, a few nights later, Uthman, you know, Umar brought Hafsa. When Hafsa husband died, Umar approached Uthman ibn Affan and he apologized. And then, uh, then he approached Abu Bakr and then Abu Bakr uh, declines. He doesn't answer to him. And then later, one day Rasulullah says statement, he says that the Sawwaju Hafsa Man Hu Khairun Min Uthman or the Zawaju Uthman Man Hiya Khairun Min Hafsa basically telling him, you know, one who's better than Uthman will marry Hafsa and one and Uthman will marry one who's better than Hafsa. Few nights later Prophet approach and and he will end up marrying him. So Abu Bakr comes to Uthman and tells him, I knew Wallahi that Prophet is interested uh, your daughter, but I did not want to uh, expose the secrets of the Prophet Sallallahu that's why I declined. So it is sunnah that for one to take his daughter and to find a good husband. It's also sunnah that uh, for uh, a sister to go on behalf of another sister and find her husband. It's also a sunnah of brother to go and find uh, a brother for his sister. So all of that, it, courting, it is permissible. Another thing that I would like to mention is uh, what an, a, a righteous man did. He offered his daughter to Musa. You all know, إِنِّي يُرِيدُ أَنْ أُنْكِحَكَ يَحْدَرْ نَتَيَّ هَتَيْنِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تَعْجُرُنِ تَمَانِي حِجَدْ فِي سُورَةِ قَصَصِ So all of that are allowed. But anyhow, when, when I cover all of that, if you want to marry, and it's a final, before you marry, approach the family, you need to do istikhara. All of you know istikhara. Prophet ﷺ used to taught the companions istikhara like ayah from uh, the Qur'an. But there is many things that I would like to be very clear with. There's a lot of misconception on the istikhara. A lot of people think istikhara, uh, if you have two choices before you decide, you need to make istikhara. No. Istikhara is when you decide, you make istikhara. When you make the choice, you ask Allah Azza wa Jal, after you make the decision, 
Allah Azza wa Jal to help you undertake, to facilitate for you. So if that if everything goes smooth, your istikhara is accepted. If everything gets rejected, then you know that is the, uh, the what Allah Azza wa Jal write it down for you. Um, another thing that I would like to clear, which is a misconception that many people has, they think they need to go to sleep so they see a dream. All of that have no pace in Islam. Or istikhara, your heart will incline toward the proper choice. All of this has no basis. There is no nothing there. You also need to seek advice. When you want to get married, ask other people, what do you think about that sister? Or what do you think about that brother? It is allowed. And everyone needs to be honest. If you're communicating with a brother over the phone, tell him everything that is truth. Don't hide anything. Tell everything as is. There is this beautiful hadith that Prophet Sallallahu uh, told uh, Fatima bin Qais when her husband Amr died, that she came to, uh, when, when her husband divorced her and they had argument, long story, he told her, go to Umm Sharif's house and finish the idda there. And she didn't finish Umm Sharif's house, but she ended up, he told her, go to Abdullah ibn Maktoum, uh, your cousin's house, because he's a blind woman and he cannot see you. When you finish your idda, come to me. When she came to him, she told him that Abu Jaham and Muawiyah, both of them likes her and they want to marry her. So Prophet Sallallahu said, Amma Abu Jaham, when you talk regarding Abu Jaham, he is a harsh man to the woman. He doesn't, he, he hits women, he beats women. That man is not a good man. He's going to abuse you basically. And as far as Muawiyah, he's a poor guy. So I suggest you to marry Usama. So it's okay to tell the brother or the sister the truth of whatever you know about that person. She was hesitant about marrying Us Usama bin Zayn, but finally after Prophet Sallallahu uh, encouraged her, she married him and she says, i never been happier than it is. So if someone has issues, physical problems, uh, if someone is sick, has STDs, if someone has problems, he should never lie to anybody. He should uh, tell the truth about whatever he has. If you know some sister that she's bad, you know, instead of sending rumors, rumors are not allowed. You cannot lie. Don't send rumors around, but tell the truth of whatever you know about that person. It is part of Islam to be clear with the person. Whatever privacy or intimacy secrets that takes place between two people, it should not be uh, uh, published online. Or nowadays, one of the problems I don't like Facebook is that many brothers, you know, everything they do, they put online, you know. Uh, if they, if she finds a good man, it's online. If she finds a bad, it's online. If she eats, it's online. You know, our youth have a problem. Facebook breaks a lot of privacy. Uh, midnight, they come and they say, I am tired. I can't even sleep. Who cares if you can't sleep three in the morning? That's none of you, their people's business. Nowadays, our youth, Facebook became a place where you tell everything about your privacy. You should not do such thing. If you find a good man, keep it to yourself. Don't tell the whole world about it. Engagement parties. This is a... Uh, this is not Islamic uh, behavior. This is not it's not it's not our culture. It's, it's it's a culture of Western culture, and there is no such thing called you have to give it a ring of engagement, and there is no such thing called you have to have a party. All what we know is Islamic marriage, which is a nikah, and best thing to do. And we will come to it. Even the weddings nowadays, we do marriage and wedding. The sunnah actually is to do marriage, which is nikah or ad. And whenever you get married and you like your wife in seven days, we'll come to it later. Prophet Sallallahu said, whenever you test her saliva and she tests your saliva, in other words, whenever you have a good time, then have a wedding, he said. Nowadays, the other way around, you have a nikah and then they have a wedding on the same night. The, the, the truth of the matter is, it should be after you guys see each other. We will come to it, inshallah, the marriage contract and how the wedding should be, inshallah, our next lecture. But to summarize it up, whatever I covered today, inshallah ta'ala, is that you are allowed to look the woman and you are allowed to look the brother as much as that will lead you and convince you to marry that person. And at the same time, it should not be in a way that's haram. It should not be naked pictures. It should not be all of that. And you can hide behind wall. Um, you can hide somewhere she doesn't have to know you're looking at her all of that based on the ahadith but it has to be permissible and you have to tell the family that you are you want to talk to the sister 
Nothing so called you have to run away with her. Approach the family. First thing to do, approach the family. Can I talk to her? Second thing you need to do, see her in public places. Third thing, make sure everything you send to each other, pictures or have you before that, has to be halal pictures and what's allowed. You can look at her as much as, or him, as much as that leads you because you will be stuck with of your life. So I will summarize up for you for that, inshallah. Our next lecture will be regarding the marriage contract. And uh, I cannot take a lot of questions tonight. As I said, I am busy tonight. But inshallah ta'ala, we will continue our next program, which is the Everyday Muslim. So inshallah, give me... Uh, Three or four minutes, inshallah, I will come back to it.